Alright, so we're gonna talk about why traditional martial arts don't work, why they're completely nonsense. If you think that you're doing traditional martial arts because you're putting on a freaking uniform and you go to a school and you go through a bunch of movements, you're out of your mind. Do you think that MMA is the be all end all in a social violence? You're out of your mind. And with all the stuff going on in the world, I never thought I'd have to start training again or even teaching to work with the old stuff, but it's come to a point where I guess it's needed. And we have to start dealing with delusions. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, your MMA is bullshit. Okay, your traditional martial arts are bullshit. And there's a reason for that. It's context and intent. Now, when it comes to, to traditional, this MMA guys are hitting each other. All right, but you're not gonna tell me that jujitsu is the, the best situation to be dealing with the fucking carjacking. You're an idiot, okay? You're, you're freaking, I, I seen Steven Crowder do this video about this, this white kid getting punched in the face in this, in this mall, and he's trying to teach him a stand-up defense. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so he just, you just taught him how to stand up. What's gonna happen? He's gonna get punched in the face again. Why? Because he's not used to getting punched in the face. <laughs> okay, and, he's get, and even probably worse off because he's gonna have a longer way to hit the ground again. It, you're, you guys have stupid ideas, stupid ideas that don't make any sense. Okay, now we're gonna go talk about like traditional martial arts. Traditional martial arts, it, what you think traditional is not tradition. So when I learned you know Korean karate, from my, my teacher you know from Vietnam, Art and Capital Division, and I learned, I trained seven days a week. I lived with him. Okay. And, you know, the way we train, you can't teach that in a school. You're not going to be freaking doing push-ups on concrete and sparring full contact, surrounded by fucking cactuses. Like, you know, it sounds like bullshit. You know, it, it just, it doesn't make sense that you're comparing people who literally fought for their life and trained to fight for their life with your, like, McDojo bullshit and I wear a fucking gi and you have these delusions that you're going to go up against somebody who's been punching people in the face all day. And the same, and the, and the main guys, yeah, you guys can fight, but you have no idea how to handle real situations because you're not training for context, all right? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So I want to go over some basic principles about what makes a traditional martial art, like real martial arts that were made for work, okay? And how do you take something like traditional Taekwondo, right? Which has hand strikes, how many forms have hand strikes, but you don't know how to use them because you don't train with the intent to use them. And then when you go into practice, what do you do? What do you do? You play. And then people will talk about one step sparring and, and no contact sparring and you don't understand the context. If you're talking about, like the guys who trained me were able to break bricks and seven inch pine together in one shot with one technique. It was one shot, one kill. You can't hit each other, okay? But at the same time, the idea of no contact sparring is that our point is within a quarter of inch. And this is where the, the context comes in. So we used to train where you'd have a, a penny or a dime on the wall, and you'd have to be able to hit that dime and come within like a fraction of a cent of that dime. Why do you do that? Because if I can break a brick with a reverse punch and I bust you in the face, do you think, I don't care what you're doing, all right? You're not gonna be able to take a shot that hard. Nobody is, nobody is. Okay, and it doesn't make you invincible, but it makes it realistic. Everybody, it, it, that's the idea about not getting into the fights, because if you know your own power, you know that other people can do the same shit to you. So that's why real martial artists don't get into fights, because they know there's only three outcomes. It's either some, you know, the opponent's maimed or killed, your maimed or killed, or there's mutual maiming and killing. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna bust you in the face and I'm pissed at you with a ball or some fucking, you're looking for a trophy. I wanna go home. So I have no problem training like that and when I made this channel you know I, I tried to do the commercial thing I, you know, I wanted to like do something to be useful to the population you know teach them about like you know Tai Chi and the things that were being like held from them and you know obviously with the censorship this is just for my people that actually pay attention but you know what in this world right now there's so much delusion you guys got to start really training for what's reality and that's for both the MMA guys and the freaking traditional martial art guys and your Krav my guy wannabes. All of you need to start actually thinking about reality. Reality is not pretty, okay? And you really do have to train techniques that are going to disable someone. It's not a fucking game. It's not a game, okay? 
I am the biggest pussy in the world. That's why I learned how to hit really hard. Because I do not like to fight. Okay? I don't, I don't want to deal with it. All right? I, 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 I'm old. I'm still pretty for a reason. Because every single time I've ever had a freaking use my hands, I made sure that I got my shit done. And I made sure that because when I train, I train like that. So I want to go over some things that makes that will make it make sense to you guys of how we used to train things and just the principle of it. And hopefully, you know, for the legacy here, it'll make some sense and maybe it'll help one of you. So the first thing is your intent. When you go into the school, uh, do you have killing intent? Okay? Like, are you actually thinking, okay, I'm doing a, a, a form in Taekwondo. Am I going, huh? Oh, am I... Am I actually trying to hit something and, and murder it? All right? Am I making sure that when I throw that punch that something's going to freaking explode? And do I have the accuracy to do that? And that's, that's the problem. So first is intent. When you walk into the school, you're walking into a school, it's a lineage of, of warriors. And your idea is to protect your nation, your family, and your family. You know what I mean? That's, that's it. Every technique you do has to be able to maim or kill. If it's not, you're doing something wrong. So if you're in a karate school or a taekwondo school and you're not able, and you see I'm doing something, and it doesn't feel like if I hit somebody, it's going to like, they're gonna be like, oh shit, you really need to stop, okay? At the same time, if you're doing MMA and you think you're a tough guy because you can like, you know, beat up one dude or, or put some freaking like, you know, choke on somebody, you're out of your mind because I'm telling you as somebody who's worked in security, and I've seen the biggest, toughest MMA guys holding their guts together because they just got stabbed because they thought their shit would work in the street and it doesn't it doesn't okay the same way Stephen Crowder is talking about this oh I'm gonna teach you how to stand up and you'll be safe let me tell you something about playing guard in the street you play that guard I'm going to kick you in your asshole legit straighten your ball straighten your asshole this ain't a game I'm not gonna let go into this shit you have a knife I'm gonna cut you in the leg like these things don't work now, I love MMA, I love the sport, okay? And I appreciate the training. At the same time, you're pulling out of context. It's completely out of context. And then you have people like do Taekwondo. And if you look at the history of the ROK Capital Division who used Taekwondo in Vietnam, okay? Literally used it to break bodies. That's the reports that were, you, know, you can find it. How, what did happen in Taekwondo? How did this happen? So the idea is understanding your intent first, all right? If your intent is to go in there and do a dance, you're screwed. If your intent is there to win a fight, you're screwed. You're trying to get home. So when you do your drills, like your pad drills, are you training for someone to pull a gun on you? Are you training for fucking three guys to jump you? All right? Are you training multiple sparring? Are you training dealing with two, three people at once? Otherwise, you're, you're full of shit. Are you training for, I'm on the ground, I'm a jiu-jitsu player, all right, and I'm getting stomped in the fucking head by five people. How is your pulling guard and you standing up again going to help you if you have no techniques that will instantaneously incapacitate somebody that you can depend on? So it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here, and oh, I know there's other people out there who, who know what I'm saying is truth, and you're not saying, you're not speaking up. You're all like, oh, MMA's the best, MMA's this, MMA's that. It doesn't work. <laughs> It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And unfortunately, I've had to be there and hold people's guts in place when their MMA failed them. So I'm not exactly very happy about the subject. So dealing with bringing your martial arts back into real reality, intention, geometry, timing, and conditioning, okay? So your intent, first off, intent. When you do a technique, what techniques are you putting into your library, into your response library, and will they incapacitate someone within the first technique? All right, where if they're not unconscious, they're disabled. They are disabled. And this is why I don't like to show these techniques. My, my master told me not to teach this, okay? Literally did not want me to teach this online, you know what I mean? which is why I started teaching Tai Chi online, because I figured, you know what, it's helpful, it's, you know, it's interesting, right? I never thought it would come to this. But going back to, you have geometry, okay? Let's look at, for instance, a simple punch. You go to any karate school or any MMA gym and you will see people throwing a punch, five people in the line, everyone's throwing a punch a little different. 
if you go to a, a golf clinic, you go to a tennis pro, you go to a baseball pro, every, there's no discrepancy of how you throw the shot. There's a statistical probability what the best way to throw that shot is. Right? Now, I'm not saying, obviously, there's really good MMA gym, there's really good Taekwondo school, there's really good karate. My point is, I'm talking about general public. All right? Obviously, I was a trainer in a lot of big gyms. I've trained really good guys who are MMA guys. I've trained really good guys at Taekwondo. I'm not saying everybody. This is for the general population of the, of the YouTube scrubs. Okay? You go to a Taekwondo school or a karate school, and what do you see? Right? Uh, and they're throwing technique, and they can't even figure out where they're throwing the punch to. They don't know why they're throwing the punch. If you can't understand a simple reverse punch and why you're hitting the solar plexus, and what angle to hit the solar plexus, and why you're hitting with these knuckles, and how, geometry, first, okay, intent and geometry, why. And this is why I say when you teach technique to somebody, you should teach them the outcome and intent go first, so it's in the subconscious. So from first infection, you're hitting him on that button. And when you hit him on that button, this is the reaction we're going for. Okay? Now I need the geometry. What's the best line for me to get power and accuracy there? And then over the time, we start to go into timing training. Can I, you know, first one step attacks, I see a target coming at me, and I get used to punching that target in a line. Right? But then I go into free sparring, which is like, okay, now I have to try to get this punch in to that space to someone who's not gonna let me do it. That's the conditioning part. But it gets lost because you start losing frame of reference of intent. If you're doing one steps, right, where someone throws a punch at you, all it is is it's, it's, it's basically a, a dummy so that you can program geometry and alignment and see a human target there because people don't like to hit people. You have to work up to stages of hitting people. All right, it's not a natural thing. Okay, most people don't naturally just want to go up and crack somebody in the face, all right? It's not a thing you want to do, especially when you're talking about breaking someone's floating rib and hopefully puncturing their lungs so they drown their own blood type of thing. That's not something normal, okay? Trying to hit somebody in a knife hand into the freaking, you know, it, it's, it's not something people want to do, you know? Go, and hitting somebody and taking their eyes out is not something somebody wants to do. And it has to be a thing where either you condition yourself past any moral obligation, which takes a very long time, where you can make it a reflex response where he comes up and oh shit, and then you just take his eyes out of his head. And it has to be trained like that, otherwise it's not gonna work. So you go into like one steps, again, same same theory, intent, geometry, timing, conditioning. I always say this, geometry is king, timing is queen, conditioning is the bastard child. Because if you have good geometry and timing, repetition's not that big of a deal. You don't, have, you know what I mean? you don't really need to be highly conditioned if your geometry and your timing is good. But it takes a lot, of, you know, it does take a certain amount of repetition and conditioning to get that timing in. So, take it what you will. Let's try to make some order out of this rant. Looking at traditional martial arts per se, right? How it was taught commercially now is a, is a bastard of what the militaries did. The reason why you have these ranks and these rank and file drills is because when you taught martial arts during the Korean and, and Vietnam War, how else could you teach a battalion? <laughs> how would how would different instructors walking in to teach that they know who knows what in the syllabus? That's what it was. But then again, now you have to condition these people who are regular civilians to go and all of a sudden become like warrior killers and be able to walk up to somebody who's trying to take their life and with their bare hands destroy them. That's traditional martial arts. Martial meaning pertaining to warfare. Art is to seek perfection of. So how are you gonna say you're a traditional martial art when, and you're a traditional martial artist when you go to a McDojo maybe twice a week for an hour with your super clean glee with no blood on it, all right? Or like, you know, at least like, I mean, as I say, I mean, guys, I say, at least they're trained to hit each other and deal with stress, but they're dealing with the stress out of context. You understand what I'm saying? So, going back to like the order of traditions in martial art, right? You start off learning you know, your geometry first and then your timing second, okay? And then you go into conditioning. So in each stage of development, basics, right? Doing a down block. How the hell can you have a line of people and one guy's front stance looks like, looks like this, one guy's looks like this, one guy's looks like this, one guy's like this, one's like this, one's like this, one's like this, and then 
there's, there's no consistency which one's correct. Right? There's only one way to swing a golf club. Right? There's only one way. I don't see I don't see 50 different styles of golf swinging. So how is it that if you're a pro boxer or a pro taekwondo player, your hand technique is such shit? What's going on? Because your teachers are failing you, especially in the commercial schools. Because they don't want to get sued or they just want to make their money and if they're too hard on you, you're going to leave. My teacher didn't give a shit. <laughs> so, point being, geometry first. Get the lines right. Make sure that when you're doing the block, there's a reason why the angle's there. You know what you're hitting with. You know why this works. You know when this works, right? Then from there, you get the timing down where someone will, they'll work it, and you get to block the kick, okay? And then you start to associate that move with that attack, okay? But the idea is that you have to start with intent. When we were taught down block, we weren't taught just down block. We were taught smash, okay? Smash the thing. Blocks and strikes, okay? Crack him inside the kneecap, break his ankle, smash, okay? It, it's, these, are, these are smashing techniques. It's not, it's not a thing to, you know, I'm, oh, I'm just gonna, yeah! No, it should, it should be, it should be scary. Where the guy throws a punch and you, you disable his arm, right? If you don't disable it, at least you know. <laughs> he's gonna respect you. He throws a kick and you smash him in the kneecap, he's not gonna just wanna throw the kick. You know, so if you're not training like that, don't come to me talking about, oh, I'm a black belt and yada, 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 and you're not training. You're not training like, okay, this is a response that I don't have to think about this. This is how I hit, <laughs> okay? And no, I'm not saying that I'm like the end all be all, I'm not a fighter. I'm a pussy. I hate fighting, <laughs> okay? But I'll tell you one thing, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. I don't look so bad for an old man. I'm a lot older than you think I am, all right? So there's a reason for that, if I survive this much shit. <laughs> So, going back to the down block. Let's say reverse punch, right? So now we have our geometry, okay? Now, pressure test it. Is it lined up? Is it good? What am I hitting with? Okay, now we're gonna start to, now you have to start training with intent. So now every single time you throw this punch, you know if you hit somebody dead in the teeth with two knuckles, the, the idea of them Stopping is very high, and if they don't stop, their face is messed up. It's not like they have a nut, they have no teeth, okay? I've never hit somebody with a reverse punch in the street, and they just got up and kept coming at me, okay? It just, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, which is why I don't understand how people say, oh, Taekwondo hands suck. Like, Joe Rogan, oh, well, maybe because you had a shitty fucking teacher who only taught you Olympic bullshit. He taught you a sport that was in context for sport. It doesn't mean the art is shit, it means that you didn't go back and train the art for context. Your teacher didn't give you the art, because he didn't have it. So, you know what I mean? And not saying that Taekwondo isn't useful because I have a fifth dot in fucking traditional Taekwondo, but I'll tell you about Taekwondo, like, when I was in a brown book, my master said to me, okay, I want you to go to every school in the city and spar them, and if you lose, don't come back, okay? And I went to all the major Taekwondo schools and karate schools I could, and I sport everybody I could find. And I went to this one school in Queens, I think it's Horace Harding Expressway. It's like a little Taekwondo school of this Korean guy near Queens College. And I go in for the, you know, the free class and I told him, and I threw one side kick. And it would, like in certain styles of the technique that they know that it's, you know the style. So like in, in Yang style Tai Chi, or in Tai Chi in general, single whip is, you know who your teacher is. You can tell it's a defining like, signature of a teacher, a single whip. In traditional Taekwondo, the sidekick is the traditional, like, you know where your lineage is. So, I do the sidekick, he stops the class, and starts screaming, who teach you this? Who teach you? Who teach you? Get out! Get out! Like, I insulted him that an American was taught the old style. So I go to, uh, uh, what's his name? Hosong Kang, uh, Master Kang on Flatlands Avenue, 80th Street, after this. And the Kang family and like the Chandokwan was like a thing. So my teacher came from the Tiger Division and then came back and then joined Chandokwan. So 
like we have like a, like a alliance. So if I have my belt, they like let me in. So uh, I spotted this whole school, and it was a whole big thing. And, like they gave like a whatever. But at the end of me beating down his whole school, he gave a speech and said to the school like, you know, we got we train this as a sport. They train this as a religion. You know, and you should take like this is how this is how it's supposed to look. And after the class, because he said to me, you know, listen, we don't teach traditional here. Because I told my master said to me, go tell him that I'm retiring, and he and I want to know if I can go take lessons from him. And he said to me, and I, I I swear I shit you not, we don't teach traditional here, but we will teach you. So, right there's a problem. We don't teach traditional here, but we'll teach you. And I found this my entire life in the training, where everywhere I would go, for instance, for me to get this, like I learned Tai Chi, tai Chi from one of the black belts from my teacher, who was the first official instructor from uh, William C.C. Chen. So, in my 1996 or something, I don't know, maybe 95, I don't, I don't remember. But they were boxing back then. It wasn't, it was Tai Chi boxing. And these guys were hitting each other. And the way I learned Tai Chi is he put a phone book on my chest and he hit me with something called a hollow fist. And he punched me in the chest. And I thought my back was going to explode. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I want to learn this. So I started learning Tai Chi forms. I learned it to hit people. I didn't know anything about push hands. I didn't know anything about like all this magic fight, fight Jing stuff. All I knew was that Tai Chi hurt people. Right, because I was a kid growing in, in New York City. I, I didn't give a shit about looking pretty. I wanted to, I wanted to hurt people. Real fucking talk. You know, so, you know, I, I learned this stuff, and then around two thousand one, no, two thousand three, like videos started coming up on these websites and then YouTube. I started seeing these these masters like throwing people and yada yada yada. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? And I, I wanted to figure this out. Like, what's going on? So I started like, you know. Dissecting videos. That's what I do for a living. It's like, you know, teach. I taught anatomy, he's theology, whatever. So, my job as a coach is dissecting videos. And so I've analyzed everything. I've, saw, I've seen every kind of video you can think of. And then I would go into every meetup I could find in the city. I would go and pick fights. And I would go to Chinatown on Sundays. I would stand there. I would challenge anybody who would come into the freaking Chicago Park. I didn't care if it was Wing Chun, Tai Chi, kickboxing. I said, whatever it is, let's go. And I did this for years in Chinatown Park, Columbus Park. And I noticed over time, I'm like, okay, something interesting. The Chinese masters, they have villages, and they're friendly, and they all practice their form next to each other, but they never share technique with each other, ever. So over time, I started making friends with them, and eventually the masters started like, oh, you know, they started calling, you know, bring me in. Eventually, they even called, called me Sifu, you know, it was like a, like a big deal in Chinatown. So, like, when the old Chinese masters are talking about you, referring to you in Chinese as Sifu this, it's a big deal. So I was like, you know, it was like family to me. And that's one thing about New York I miss more than anything is going to Chinatown. Because I, I love those guys. Like, <laughs> but, um, so one guy's father, uh, uh, one, one guy's father was a really famous uh, a Mantis Tai Chi teacher. And he started teaching me, uh, the son started teaching me some, like, Muay Thai and some Mo Zhongi, which is like uh, Lost Track Fist. And, you know, at, that was like, really got me into their circles, you know? Um, but then I started to notice, like they started teaching me techniques. I would hang out there and, you know, because we, you know, we'll play push hands together, me and the, you know, the old guys who would kick the crap out of me. And they would all like show me one thing here or one thing there. And like, and finally before I left New York, they literally said to me, I shit you not, the masters don't teach you the correct technique for the first 10 years. They teach you a certain amount so that you don't turn on them and hurt them later. And then, like only then, and then if you're able, if I, if you're able to see it and take it on your own, then good. But if not, you have to like really earn that technique because, you know, something as simple as how you turn your wrist in full context completely changes everything. And it sounds stupid. When you're talking about like these like very complex traditional Chinese martial arts, there's a major problem of how they stop becoming useful because you had the Cultural Revolution in China, right, where martial arts were banned and all this other crap. 
And then, you know, on top of that, you have these traditions of not sharing with the outside villages. And then you have, you know, people who are just shady and don't want to teach or teach bullshit. <coughs> and it's just like a lot of degradation. So three to five generations later, the style is completely, it's empty inside. You know, and there'll be, in every village I have a fragment of it. So you get five to ten generations later, and these people aren't farmers, they have no strength. You know, so they don't have any, they're not cross training like they used to. So they don't have like Jing Yi and Bagua and this and that, you know, and, or, you know, some Sanda stuff. No, they're just doing this one thing and it, five generations later and they're thinking it's going to work magically. And they have no idea the context of how much is lost. So, I had to just get the rant out for, you know, for my people, historical reference, but I, I just can't take the shit I'm seeing. So anyway, let's go and talk about some context of Tai, tai Chi, okay? So when you see people playing Tai Chi now, you, again, they're coming from this diluted idea of people who've never fought, who didn't have to defend them, their family. There was no cops in ancient China that were gonna save you. So you know that the style lasted, it must have worked at one time or another. What's different, right? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, like, you know, it's cultural. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, look at the Filipino martial arts. Filipinos will cut you, they don't care. <laughs> like, you know, and it's, it's a cultural thing because look how they fight in the streets. Look how the Chinese fight. It's like, it's, it's different. It's a different mindset. So you're mixing all these different elements that got messed up. So for instance, let's just take like, how was Tai Chi probably taught in the closed door, okay? You take a ward off, right? Ward off posture. What is ward off? Yes, it's a throw, yes, it's this, but you have like, you know, lock that is basically a back fist, okay? You also have a lot of breaks and dislocations, and you also have the retina scrapes that are constantly happening in this form, where you're constantly scraping the eye, okay? These are things that are not taught in context. So if you're practicing the form, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just doing a form, and there's no association in your mind that someone's trying to attack me, I have to block the attack, do something and hit this guy. Obviously your form's not gonna work because you're thinking, oh, Tai Chi has to be soft. You think that, that, that how are you gonna fight like that? You have to be able to, to hit the guy, okay? So you know, you're thinking like, press, oh, press, press. It, you have to hit the guy. Okay? If it comes to a white crane, you have all the animals in it. You have white crane, you have mantis, you have you know, repulse monkey, carry tiger, right? You know, single whip, you know, and I was, it, it can be either mantis or it can, it can be uh, crane, right? But you also have hawk. So when I was taught Tai Chi, it was snake and hawk, not snake and crane. So that's a whole other thing, depending on who you're talking to. So how are you gonna get these things to work if you're not training in realistic contests, you've never been punched in the face, you don't let anybody from outside your school test you, and you don't ever do any simulations of what can happen to me in a real situation, how am I gonna use these techniques to associate the brain? So I think for people who do Tai Chi, you probably should go to like a white crane class that teaches self-defense, because they probably have a lot of things that will help you. But if you keep making believe that, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do this form and magically Oh, everything's just good. It don't work like that. It don't work like that, okay? If you don't understand, like, you know, like what, how you get the heavy hands, right? Like, where do you hit the guy? Like, roll back. Like, you, roll back can be a slap to the ear. Like, you know, getting slapped in the ear that hard is not good, right? There's a lot of small traps, tears, and close, very close quarter disabling moves, okay? You have brushing, which is, you know, grinding on certain areas that are, are not exactly hard targets. You know, you have dotting, which is stabbing soft targets. Obviously, if you've read the manual, the, the classic, and you understand what dotting is, how is your Tai Chi gonna work? <laughs> and how do you, it's like, yeah, Tai Chi can work for, it can work for an old guy who's been practicing 80 years, who has great geometry and timing, but for the rest of us, we need speed. We need real speed and we need real power, all right? Now, an 80 year old man who's been doing this, who can, you know, put his finger through a tiny little hole every single time, it doesn't take much for him to stab you in the throat with his finger, <laughs> okay? So yeah, it can do the work, you know? It doesn't take much for you to go grab him and he moves out the way and just japs you in the throat, 
But for the rest of us, us normal freaking humans, we need, you know, geometry so we have good power, right? Timing so we have alignment and conditioning to repeat, repeat this so we can actually hurt the guy. But it all comes from me, the intent. Now, if you're not practicing with the intent that someone's trying to kill me and rape my family and burn my fucking house down, you're practicing bullshit. It's just bullshit. <clears throat> and I don't care what name it's under. I don't care if it's jujitsu or whatever the hell you're doing. I don't see people doing realistic simulation drills where someone's coming at you in a way that's not, <laughs> it's not like your MMA fight or like some Tai Chi push hands group or some Taekwondo kickboxing match, right? Because I've seen, it doesn't matter, like, yeah, it's great. Like a, a Muay Thai guy is great. He's really strong. He's really heavy. You know, he can, can hit really hard. He can take a lot of shots. But he's been conditioned to fight one opponent in a square space with no obstacles and a referee. That's not how it works. You need to take that Muay Thai guy and throw him in the closet. If you see some of my old videos, we used to train in a concrete hallway that was four by four. You, know, you have to train in the condition that you may be presented in so that you have a response for it and your body is used to it. <coughs> so that, that's really the, the thing. So you can't, you know, and you can't call yourself traditional if you're only playing LARPing and going through a dance with a fancy uniform on. Traditional has to come with the intentional tradition, okay? The intention of like, my lineage comes directly from the founder of the martial arts in the Korean military. How the hell am I gonna sit here and make believe I can teach this to general public in a commercial school? That's why I don't do it, right? When I teach like, you know, for instance, Tai Chi, like I've trained in a lot of different styles of Yang style, and some of them are not friendly. <laughs> and do you really want to, first of all, to be teaching these techniques to random people? No. And two, could I ever even teach this in a commercial school without getting sued or people stop coming because it's too difficult? So the problem is, but you keep calling it traditional. Oh, and traditional martial arts suck. No, you suck and you practice like an idiot. You practice like a schmuck. So how can you take what you, because I'm not going to teach you guys too many techniques. I don't want to be responsible for you hurting people. But for those of you who are already training, I'm going to give you a couple of clues. It's gonna help you. So first off, geometry, okay? You have to, you know, we're gonna say it again, intention first. Your entire basis of your style is to protect life and virtue. You're, you're there to, you know, honor to the king, you know, or to the, to the president or to your countrymen, honor to your family or honor to your land. You're here to protect everything. You're the protectors. So you're everything you do. You're the sheepdog. You have to be able to handle your shit. Is that technique going to handle business every single time, okay? And that's, that's all on you. So how do we get there? First is intent, come with that. Second is geometry. Okay, what am I, how am I hitting, what am I targeting first and what is the desired outcome? If I'm throwing a reverse punch, where am I throwing the reverse punch? I was taught only this right by the, right by the sternum and the front, because I, I want to stop his motion. Right? So when you hit somebody, you hit them straight in the front, okay? The straight, because if you, you could test this, have, pick your pinky out, put it up to your friend's nose like this, and try to let them, tell them to walk forward and see what happens. It stops their balance completely. So you want to bust them right in, it, right in that shit. Now, granted, in a real fight, the reason why we train to a target the size of a dime or a penny is because under pressure, whatever you train, it gets wider. So if you're practicing to big punching mitts like this, when, and this is about this size, when you actually have to deal with reality, that space is gonna become like a big balloon, like this big, and you're gonna wind up having big misses. And you see this in pro boxing matches all the time. Because under pressure, they're training for these mitts. So when they're under pressure and stress, there's a DVH, there's like this failure rates. And it gets, that target accuracy gets bigger. So in order to deal with that, we train to a very, 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 very fine target which is the reason for no contact sparring. To be able to touch someone, but throw them to the ink at full power and not hit them because you chose to not hit them, all right? And now people say, oh, you pull the punches. All I can tell you is that I train like that. We also train full contact, we're also sparring, all right? So that's probably why, because we would go from no contact to full contact in the body like Tokushin was. So maybe that was the, the thing, but I don't really see a problem with holding because like when you when someone's at you come in you just know you have to break that's where the breaking comes in also because it teaches you to go through the target so anyway <coughs> you 
you pick your target, and now you have to hit that target every single time the exact same way, like if you were with a golf pro and he's teaching you a golf swing. You're not going to throw a reverse punch and there's 15 different punches. You have to be able to throw it the same way, okay? The same way to a very close target without hitting the target, okay? You have to be able to have that kind of control. It's, you know, when I said it's scientific dirty fighting, it's like you're doing surgery backwards. You have to be able to disassemble. So when you're practicing a technique, you have to think, I'm going to hit that little button. And I'm going to break that button. Okay? You can't just be like, oh, yeah, 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 this is a great workout. <laughs> because then you wonder why you go up against a guy who's boxing Right? or doing with, or anything, and he's practicing hitting a target that's moving and hitting a target, and you wonder why your hands suck. Your hands suck because you train like shit. A reverse punch is, Muhammad Ali would prove it to you, the straight right, which is a reverse punch, is probably the most effective punch known to man. One, because it has your whole body aligned behind it, you know what I mean? And two, it's because it's very difficult to see. It's very difficult to see coming out. You can't really see that target. Here's the camera, okay. So here, it's hard to see that come at you. It's it's different if I wind up and do this. There's more time, there's, and there's weight. But what do I want to really hit? I want to hit you in the side of the face? No, I want to break your shit. You see what I'm saying? So it, it's, it has to be straight. But no, it has to be on the same target. And that's one of the main pro problems, again, attention geometry. Now you have to deal with timing. So after you've done this for a couple of weeks and you got your whatever it is, and you feel confident, now you go into one steps. Why one steps? Because now one steps gives the subconscious a, a reason, a, a way to deal with throwing a technique at a living human. The same way, in my understanding, people who would teach shooting, they would teach you on a regular paper target that was just a square, and that did not transfer so well until they started using human silhouettes. It has to do with subconscious reference. So when you do a one step attack, one steps are not supposed to be realistic. Once that's supposed to teach you geometry, timing, and association of getting ready to hit somebody where you don't want to do that because humans don't want to hurt other humans naturally unless you're insane. So doing your one steps, he throws a punch, I you know, I step out, I do like oh, whatever it is, okay? What's this teaching me? Okay, he's punching me in my face, and I have to be close enough for him to hit me so I have fear and get out of the way. If you want to get hit, that's how one steps were done when I was learning. Okay, you had to be in a space where he can hit you hard and he will come at you for real. The only thing is he only comes at you one technique and you know the technique's coming. So you have to be a complete idiot to get punched in the face like that. And it happens. But that's part of the training. You get punched in the face. <laughs> okay? Everyone gets punched in the face at least once. So he comes at you, okay, I see timing of the human coming at me trying to hit me. Okay, but it's kind of safe so I can deal with this. And I go out of the way and I practice. Okay, I'm gonna hit him in the temple. Okay, I'm gonna hit him in the floating rib. Okay, I'm gonna kick him in the knee, boom, whatever it is. Okay, and then you're practicing geometry and timing. Then you go into what we call three-step con control sparring, which is basically, there's an attacker and a defender. And the attacker goes three times, the defender goes three times. And then they immediately switch so they have to deal with counterattacking. Again, it's a stage of control where the person has an opportunity to deal with some of the fear of getting hit and hurting somebody he, you know, he's fighting. But again, dealing with free sparring issues, and then you go into free sparring, complete free sparring, where you just go. Now, when we first start free sparring, you start with zero contact, but you have to be for over, like within this much space. Why? Because you're trying to learn control and target focus. How do I actually pick what technique I'm gonna hit you with? You know, then when you start getting to higher levels, we just start cracking each other because it was fun. You know, I'm old, I'm not doing that shit before. I mean, I'm just not doing it. I'm tired. But that's how we did it. Now, how would you deal with a sidekick, for instance? When you're pressure testing the sidekick, you see people who throw a sidekick and they hit the guy and they fall back. If I throw a sidekick at you, and it's a full extension, right? I throw a sidekick, and it's a full extension, and you hit it, and, it, and I fall back, what's well, wrong? My geometry's broken. So right there, you know your style's bullshit. 
if you kick somebody and you go back, you did something wrong in your training, which is your geometry. Okay, so how do you fix that? Go hold the wall, pick a target, throw the ticket at the target. Throw the ticket at the target. Throw the ticket at the target. Make sure you can hit a dime. Okay? Now you also have to be thinking again, I'm gonna hit a human who's trying to kill me with this. I'm gonna hit a human. I'm hitting a human. <laughs> okay? It has to be in your head constantly. So then going back and taking this the Tai Chi. How are you gonna go and fix your Tai Chi? Right? Because Tai Chi is a martial art. Okay? It, it, you know, these techniques are all hidden, but the best way to fix your Tai Chi is to do a very square form. So in traditional martial arts, any martial art, you have what we call chamber, you know, a chamber and attack, right? So basically, you know, you throw a punch, you chamber the punch, you throw the punch. Another thing is when you're doing traditional forms, and you see like these, these big moves, these big moves, that's not how you're supposed to fight, okay? It's the same idea as like you're, you're playing tennis and you learn a proper swing, but then when you're dealing with the ball, you just swing, okay? Learning the chamber attack phase, apply the Tai Chi. Tai Chi. So in Tai Chi, you have get off the line, root, get ready. What does that mean? I'm, I'm setting up for my fence, I'm getting ready to push away danger. So one's coming at me, the first thing I want to do is change my line, create a base, and get ready to link the body to unlink the body. Next thing is from here in my preparation, I throw my fence. That's what lift hands is, okay? He's punching me, I don't care. He's pushing me, I don't care, okay? He's dead, I don't care. Whatever it is, my first response in the Tai Chi form is, oh shit, get off me, okay? Now taking that understanding of preparation, action. Now you can argue, because like, like my form is eight moves in that first thing. You have ward off, roll back, press, push, and there's a whole other series in the center here. Ward off, roll back, you know, it's Pongo uh, Gia Tan The whole thing is in here. So we do a whole form, all the movements of the form are right here before I even start off the left ward off. And that's a whole other topic. Point being, let's just go into a basic form like William Chen or you know, Chen Man Chang or any of the young stuff. So use your opening, whatever it is. What's my first move, right? You carry that ball. What's this carry the ball? That's a block, right? High guard. High guard, okay? High guard. So first thing, my high guard is my chamber phase. Now I have my shoulder strikes to make space, and now I have my act phase, which is my locked out, basically back fist, okay? Back fist. And we have right the scrape, cut. This is my high guard. So now I have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, okay, one, two. So the idea of having a chamber and action phase. Now people are going to argue, that's not real Tai Chi. Okay, but it, it works, because I guarantee you, you come to me with that Tai Chi, your Tai Chi, make me believe you don't touch nobody, and then come play with me and see what happens. It's gonna be a big difference. You're not gonna like it. So, take it or leave it. Now, thinking about like the real Tai Chi, yes, we all know that these are style gestures, so every single part of this can be a technique and an act, whatever. But you're not gonna be able to learn how to fight like that. So you need to have your Yang part of your Yin Yang. You can't just constantly be, oh, everything's so soft. No, you have to learn how to bust somebody, okay? You have to learn how to hit somebody. When you're doing, you know, brush knee, oh, but this is great to learn geometry and timing. Geometry, right? But when you do brush knee, you have to hit the guy, okay? So, you know, what do you think this is? This is? Step up, parry, deflect, punch, right? Oh yeah, this is nice, this is nice. Right? This is all so pretty. This is this is this is not how it works. <laughs> okay? It, it's a step of parry, deflect, and punch. How, how are you gonna oh. if you're not willing to step out of the comfort zone and start training like, like someone who has to fight, don't expect it to work. <laughs> okay? And if you don't believe me, there's two hand, there's two person like fighting drill sets. 
But my theory is this, how are you gonna take something you already know and make it into something that can save your life? You're not gonna do it by making believe. And I can't do it by making believe I'm you know, some friendly monk on the mountain teaching you bullshit, you know, I, I can't do that. So, basically I like to say, it's like you gotta remember the basics. First your intention, okay, everything's based on your intention, ye. Next is your geometry, okay? What is the, uh, the desired outcome goal and which would be disable this person and to get maximum efficiency in my body. What alignment is gonna do that for me? How do I make my system's alignment better to do that? Then I have to work on, I have to get the alignment down, is timing in between me and whatever's coming at me in space. Third thing is repetition and conditioning, okay? So start looking into why Tai Chi looks a lot like Wen Chun. Right? It's the big brother. Wen Chun's a little system. So how is it that you can apply this concept? Or like Crane, for instance. Or even Monk, if you listen to the names of the form, they're telling you something, right? You know, again, I was, I, I was learning Snake and Hawk. I didn't learn it as Crane. But, for instance, like, you know, what is, like, uh, White Snake Spit's Tongue? You know, like, what, what is that? Like, what is, uh, you know, you know, like, they didn't even step up to, like, parry and punch. Like, you know, but now you go into, for instance, Repulse Monkey. If you ever see monkeys, like monkey style kung fu, or even a monkey move, they don't go, uh, it's like, ah! Right? Monkeys move like, ah! they, they're, they're like very jumpy, and they're very like hoppy and snappy, okay? Monkeys don't move that. Carry Tiger back to mountain camp for a rematch, okay? So you hear? Ah, wouldn't it make more sense? Doesn't that make more sense? If it's called carry Tiger back to mountain camp for a rematch? Like, you know, like, you, you guys are thinking, right? If you're, <laughs> the world doesn't care about your feelings or opinions about condition. The world cares about outcome and reality, okay? So like, what other moves is there? Like, you know, Fair Lady Weaving the Shuttles, okay? So the move Fair Lady Weaving the Shuttles is basically you have these hot Asian chicks taking your luggage, a little Asian girl, super hot chick, and she's like tiny, but she's picking up this big ass bag, putting it over her head into the glove compartment of the train. How is a little girl gonna be able to lift something and put it over her head into a compartment? You have to think, okay, I'm lifting something, and now I'm doing a deadlift, I'm doing a squat, okay, I'm doing an overhead press, okay? So it's teaching you geometry, right? The intent is, I'm tiny, and whatever I'm lifting is huge. So I gotta make sure that I have good geometry and base fun. Now I think the martial law aspect of it, obviously it's an overhead block on palm strike, right? That's all it is. Just high cover of palm strike to the face, okay? How would it work in a fight? Okay, I don't care what he's doing, I'm gonna take his hands, push his hands towards his face, and I'm gonna come at the same time and try to smack him in the jaw, okay? <laughs> now, am I saying that like you get no, you're getting into a fight, you're gonna you're gonna get hit, you're gonna get cut, you're gonna get banged up, I have scars all over me. You know, you're gonna lose. <laughs> the idea is you get to go home. You get to go home because of the like the, the way you train it. Like, you know, did you do enough damage fast enough that you sustain the least amount of damage? You know what I mean? That's it. I mean hopefully, you know, if you're if you're right and you're smart and you're sneaky, you know, which is hard because most of the time when you get jumped, you're not ready for it. But for instance, someone coming at you and blah, 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 and I'm like, hey, so I, don't, I don't know how to fight, I'm a big pussy. Because I am a big pussy. I hate fighting, I hate getting hit. This is why I learned how to hit people really hard. <laughs> okay? So I'm like, yo, no, 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 chill, bro, chill. No, chill. And then I see him talking, and in the middle of his talking, his eyes just wave his nice blast him as hard as I can. That's just, <laughs> you can call it cheap and a sucker punch, I call it going home. I call it going home. I'm gonna tell you real talk. It's like I'm not an MMA fighter. I'm not a, a tough guy. You know, I've unfortunately did security for many years. You know, I was in the New York City Guard Angels for a few years. I did private security at the clubs. I worked as a bodyguard. I hit a lot of people. Not because I'm a tough guy, because I had no choice. I hate fighting. But I'll tell you what I did. I made sure that I gave them no advantage whatsoever to hit me. I'm not stupid. You think I'm gonna want to get into a fight with somebody who's training every day to do this? No, 
<laughs> That's not what this is about. What it's about is if I see somebody who's doing this, I'm gonna think of the best way to cheat and break his shit so that I can go home because I'm old and I don't got insurance. And I don't got nothing to prove other than me getting proof I can go home. So I don't care if I have to freaking kick him in the balls, kick him in the kneecaps, throw a chair at him, you know, stab him. I don't care. I'm old, I wanna go home. So that's the mentality. So I don't give a shit what Kenpo Vu Jiu Jitsu thing you're doing. It's not gonna work if you don't have intent, you don't have geometry, and you don't have timing. Okay? So before you start saying traditional marks, well, it's a bullshit or homemade bullshit, I'm gonna tell you all, it's all bullshit. Because you're bullshit. Because you're not training for it. So grab your friends, grab your dojo partners, grab your freaking mat buddies, grab whoever the fuck it is, and stop training how your teachers are telling you and start thinking about, yo, there's riots, the cities are burning. How is your MMA or your Taekwondo or your Jiu Jitsu gonna help you with the 60 people and it's chaos? What are you gonna do? All right? Now, traditional martial arts were supposed to be meant for that. And if they weren't able to do that back in the day, they wouldn't have survived that long. Okay? If you want to help out, because I'm the broke renegade monk on the mountain, it's guiding our divinity at Gmail is my PayPal. You want to send me your money? That's great. Guiding our divinity at gmail.com. Send me your money if you can. If not, just, you know, train smart. <laughs>